Did you know that lack of sleep actually makes you hungrier? <laughs> Hi friends, I'm Anna, your virtual fitness and nutrition coach, and today we're taking a nap. Oh wait, that's not right. But I could use a nap though. So you ended up here because you probably feel like you've been doing everything right. You've been exercising, eating healthy, hydrating, and you're still struggling with weight loss, muscle gain, or athletic performance. Well, today you're going to find out what is missing and how this seemingly not so important thing ends up holding you back from achieving your goals. That's why today we're going to go a little bit into the science of sleep and how it can affect your fitness results. And you should definitely watch the whole video because at the end you will understand what you've been doing wrong and you'll also get actionable steps on how to improve your sleep no matter how hectic your life is. Before we dive into it, do make sure to take some time to like this video and subscribe because it really helps get this video to as many people as possible and also it helps me sleep better at night. Let's start with the basics. What is sleep and why do we need sleep? Sleep is the unsung hero of our times. It is the ultimate recovery practice, and yet most of us barely pay attention to it or prioritize it enough. We find excuses as to why we don't have the time or how to distress the quality of our sleep is at its lowest. In this video, I'll also talk about how stress can affect sleep, but first, a few reminders on why you need sleep and why you need to do something now to improve it. Notice how I said that sleep is the ultimate recovery practice? with emphasis on recovery and not just rest. We already know that sleep helps you feel well rested and ready for the day, at least most of the time. But recovery is what helps you build the endurance and resilience to face the stress you put on your body, including physical exercise. Recovery is also about returning to homeostasis, practically your body's baseline. Without it, stress is going to accumulate and without proper recovery, different body functions and even mental begin to fail and shut down. Sleep is an essential part of the optimal function of your body, and it is such a complex process that even scientists are still yet to discover all its secrets. But there are a few things that we know for sure. Sleep helps our body to recover, get rid of metabolic waste, improve brain function, and regulate metabolic health. So a lot of things are happening while we're sleeping, and although most of us see this process as a not an off thing, when off means that we basically shut down to rest, your body, especially the brain, is actually very active during this time. Some other benefits of good quality sleep include better mood, improved focus and memory, keeps your brain healthy, helps you lose fat and build new muscle, it affects hormone, it regulates appetite and satiety, and regulates blood sugar. So when we sleep, we go through different phases with corresponding brain waves like beta, alpha, delta, and theta, and we actually cycle back and forth through these stages during the night. Each stage has its own benefits, and during this time, a lot of things are happening that, based on research, have a great impact on your fitness goals, as we'll see in a few minutes. How stress affects sleep Let's talk a little bit about stress. Stress occurs in so many areas of our lives, some of which we might not even be aware of. And it's something accumulated, meaning that unless we do something about it, it continues to add up. This phenomenon is actually known as allostatic load. Generally, when we take a deeper look into stress, we end up analyzing it from different perspectives, such as physical, mental, environmental, biological, and emotional. I'm not going to go into it, but do let me know if you want me to make a video where I discuss more in depth how these perspectives play a role in your well-being and how they can affect the way you respond to stress, as well as how nutrition plays a big role in how good or bad your sleep is. Stress is such a common part of everyone's life, and it's good to know that not all stress is bad, and trying to pursue getting rid of all the stress in your life is not ideal and also pretty much impossible. However, it might be better to try and dive deeper into what are the biggest stressors in your life that you can improve, which ultimately can positively impact your sleep as well. At the same time, we can also take a different approach in which we put our focus on sleep and by trying to create healthier habits around it so that it can help us cope more effectively with everything else. And speaking of how focusing on other areas of your life can impact the quality of your sleep, a study also shows that stress-induced insomnia can be overcome by implementing different practices, such as regular movement at moderate intensity for 30 minutes, 3 or 4 times per week, 
having balanced meals, and practicing breathing exercises. How sleep affects athletic performance and muscle growth. When any of the areas in our lives, such as environmental, physical, mental, and so on, gets disrupted, our fitness results start to suffer. I get asked quite a lot if sleep has any importance when it comes to athletic performance, muscle growth, and recovery. And the thing is, it really does. Nowadays, so, so many people, especially motivational gurus and entrepreneurs, keep promoting the all of nothing mindset and saying that the only way to achieve their level of success is by having this so-called perfect routine where you wake up at five, go to the gym, drink the infamous almighty healer, celery juice, and hustle, hustle, hustle. <sighs> no. Not only that this is not sustainable for 99% of the population, waking up at 5 means reducing the chances of getting a good night's sleep, and that will affect everything else in your life. But let's go back to fitness performance. Research shows that without proper sleep, your cognitive, motor, and physiological functions are reduced. And when it comes to training, it is impossible to train, recover, and grow without proper sleep. When you sleep, your body begins to release a bunch of hormones that aid your recovery. And some of them are the AGH human growth hormone and the insulin life growth factor, or IGF-1. And I bet that by now you can guess why these are so important, especially when you want to increase your muscle tissue. AGH is the primary way in which your muscles can recover and grow, and during sleeping, the production is at its peak. And another study shows that lack of sleep decreases the activity of protein synthesis pathways and it increases the activity of degradation pathways, which eventually leads to loss of muscle mass and reduced recovery after training. And last but not least, one really important thing to note is that sleep is not accumulative. And what I mean by that is that you cannot have five days of sleep deprivation and make up for that on the weekends. Even a day of sleep deprivation can take more than a week until your cognitive functions are back to normal, and during this time you can expect your athletic performance to be reduced as well. So sleep hygiene is important. The link between sleep and weight loss. I want you to think about the last time you had a terrible night's sleep. If that just happened, then maybe it will be easier to analyze. Did you notice anything different? Maybe your hunger, emotions, your energy levels, or maybe something else. Some of these things you might not even relate to your sleep, and sometimes you might not even realize you didn't sleep that well, or that it's not such a big deal. One of the benefits of good quality sleep is that it helps you lose fat. Our body are essentially a giant clock that regulates all of the processes that occur in your body. We have the circadian clock, which includes all the biological processes that occur in a 24-hour cycle, we also have the sleep-wake cycles, which is greatly influenced by light and dark, and we have the central clock in our brains, and so on and so forth. All of these processes that happen in the 24-hour daily cycle can be either upregulated, which means that they are sped up or increased in production, or downregulated, where the speed slows down and there is a decrease in production. And another clock that I didn't mention is the adipose tissue clock, which responds to energy balance. It decides whether to store or use body fat. The processes, such as storing or burning fat and using nutrients for fuel, can become more or less active over your circadian cycle. For example, gluconeogenesis, which is a synthesis of glucose from non-carbohydrate sources, happens mostly during the day. While glycogenolysis, where glycogen is broken down into glucose, peaks at night. And other similar things happen with other processes as well. And did you know that lack of sleep actually makes you hungrier? When you don't sleep enough or the quality of your sleep is bad, leptin, which is a hormone that regulates appetite and fat storage, tends to go down, while ghrelin, which stimulates hunger, goes up. Another factor is the adipose tissue, which can affect how hungry or full you feel. It can also simulate cravings and what you crave, whether sweet or salty, and how difficult or easy it is to manage them. The more you stay up, the more likely you are to give into midnight cravings or make poor nutritional choices without being able to stop. So next time you find yourself binging or craving different foods, maybe take a step back and ask yourself if perhaps sleep is a cause. How much sleep you should get? 
when it comes to how much you should sleep, it really depends and everyone is different. But there are a few principles that kind of apply to everyone. And one of them is having good sleep hygiene. And in this case, you might need to practice some self-awareness and see what works for you and what doesn't. There are a few things that influences our sleep, the quality and how much of it we get. And one of them is our genes, which influences our circadian rhythm. And one of them is actually chronotypes. People have different chronotypes. You might call yourself a night owl or an early bird or something in between, which I am kind of part of. And the reason I mention this is because it is kind of part of who you are and you should definitely listen to it. Working night shifts as a morning person quickly turns into a nightmare when you finally get home in the morning and notice that you can't sleep or starting your shift at 7 a.m. as a night owl will definitely set your mood for the day and not in a good way. So how much sleep you should actually get? Well, it, it depends. Very, very few people thrive on four to six hours of sleep per night, definitely not me, while well, most of us do better with seven to nine hours. Athletes, especially those close to competition days, might even get more than nine hours and even 10 hours of sleep for improved performance and recovery. Tips on how to improve sleep. Hopefully by now you have a better understanding of how important sleep is and how you should start paying more attention to your sleeping routine. But now remains the question, how can I actually get better sleep? When it comes to sleep, there are a few things that might be more difficult to control, such as chronotype, hormonal changes, medical issues, and some parts of your environment. But one of the things you can definitely work on is your mindset how to approach this issue and how you can do your best with what you have. Now that you know more about sleep and how it can affect your goals, let's talk about how you can improve it. One of the most important things we have to look at when trying to improve our sleeping habits is the environment. The environment can have such a huge impact on the quality of sleep and how we perceive it. Things like temperature, noise, and even the room setup can affect it. So things like having a clean room, doing some small decoration changes can get you in a calmer state of mind and can make the difference in your sleep. Another thing you can do, and actually one of the most impactful things too, is to create a bedtime ritual. This is a routine you create for yourself that can help calm down your mind from a high level of stimulation and can get you into ready to sleep mode. It can start with just five minutes before sleep and hopefully in time you can work on increasing this to maybe 30 minutes or even an hour. And the best part about this is that you decide how far you want to go or what you want to do. And to give you some ideas, you can do things like dimming the lights, turning off electronics, listening to calming music, journaling, deep breathing or meditation, lighting a candle, taking a hot bath, and so on. Try different things and see what works for you. And I also created some lovely free printables that you can find the link to down in the description box. You'll find 30 ideas for your bedtime routine, a sweet five minute audio meditation practice, and a beautiful printable where you can write your special routine to hang anywhere for you to see. All right, so before we end this video, let's do a quick recap. Sleep is important. Sleep deprivation can hinder your athletic performance, muscle gain, and recovery. Poor sleep can keep you from losing body fat. Sleep is not accumulative, so you can't recover those sleepless nights that easily. And last, download the free resources that I created for you to help you create your perfect bedtime routine. Although there are plenty of systemic and structural factors that can contribute to poor quality of sleep, that doesn't mean you can't actively take a step toward um, changing that. I hope you found value in watching this video. Make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell to stay up to date with all the upcoming videos on fitness science and nutrition. See you in the next video. Bye!